Good morning. It's time for another uh, daily devotion here. And today our devotion comes from Isaiah chapter 60. Now, chapter 60, verses 1 through 5 are frequently readings for Easter Sunday. Uh, it's today, Tuesday, Easter second week. Um, it's still greatly appropriate to, to have this as a conversation. So here comes our reading. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. See, darkness covers the earth, and thick darkness is over the peoples. But the Lord rises upon you, and his glory appears over you. Nations will come to your light, and kings to the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look about you, all assembled, and come to you. Your sons come from afar, and your daughters are carried on the arm. Then you will look and be radiant, and your heart will throb and swell it with joy. The wealth on the seas will be brought to you, to the riches of the nations will come. Herds of camels will cover your land, young camels of Midian and Ephah, and all from Sheba will come, hearing gold and incense, and proclaiming the name of the Lord. All of Cater's flocks will be gathered to you. The rams of Neboath will serve you, and they will be accepted as offerings on my altar, and I will adorn my glorious temple." So this is usually the reading for Easter sunrise service, actually, um, and it's one of my favorite readings. Uh, as I'm fond of saying at Prince of Peace, if you are a pastor, then every reading that's in front of you is your favorite reading. Uh, it's hard for me to find not favorite readings here in the Bible, but that's what happens when you're a pastor. Okay, so I really like this idea of arise and shine for your light has come, and we've seen that light coming. Right, we could talk about this with Transfiguration Sunday, that'd be a good one. This, of course, would also be a fantastic uh, one for if you were going to do a Christmas vigil, Christmas Eve into Christmas Day, this could be a fantastic one um, to uh, passage to focus on as well. Um, this idea of rise and shine, right? And if you know the old uh, gospel hymn, Rise and Shine, and Give God the Glory, Glory, uh, you can sing it along in your head throughout the rest of this. Uh, you're welcome. So here's the, here's the thought here. Arise and shine is verse 1, and verse 2 is, darkness covers the earth, thick darkness. And I want to talk just a little bit devotionally about... Um, the light of Christ as he reigns in our hearts in the darkness of the world. Um, and usually we'll go down the moralistic road on this and, and have a lot to say about all the sinful darkness that gets done in deeds best done in darkness, uh, as the poet says. Uh, but sometimes that's not what the darkness of the world looks like. Um, the darkness of the world right now is a darkness covered with anxiety because if you get coronavirus, you're, you're going to die. You're certainly going to die. And then that's it. That's the end of the world. La last week was a Palm Sunday. It was either Palm Sunday or it was Easter Sunday. Uh, a pastor broke all the rules and had his congregation come on down. This was, I think, in Texas. Um, and they interviewed him. And, he, and they tried to get across, aren't you worried about dying? And he said, why? I'm going to go to heaven if I die. And they switched tone, aren't you worried about some of your people dying? And he said, why? They'll just go to heaven. And this just, they, they went around two or three or four times, the reporters with him, um, and trying to get him to see sense on this from their perspective, and he kept answering why they'll go to heaven. Um, we have a different opinion uh, in terms of let's not hasten that. Uh, let's be socially responsible, at least in the short term, while we watch and see how this goes. But he's not wrong. He's not wrong at all. What's the worst that could happen? Actually, that we would survive, right? You die and go to heaven is actually one of the good things, right? As Jesus or as Paul says, for me to live or uh, to live is Christ and to die is gain. So that's not the worst. But the darkness of the world says death is it. Death is the end. Death is the great enemy. Uh, and if you get this thing and or you, you know, you're going to die and that'll just be the worst. And the anxiety is way up there. And that is darkness. It's not the light of Christ because it doesn't hold death in the right perspective. I don't want you to die and I don't want you to go out and break quarantine orders or or to be silly out there. But um, it's important to point out that 
things that are reasonable uh, may not actually be um, fully the light of Christ. It might be reasonable for us as human beings, especially in light of our brothers and sisters. And I'll get to that here in a second. Um, well, I'll get to it now. Right? It's not you, the faithful, that I'm worried about dying. It's you giving it to somebody who hasn't met Christ yet and them dying, because that is the end of the world. So one of the things after the end of this digression, you can actually think of some other things, where it's the, the, the darkness of the world and versus the light of Christ. And of course, we can do the moral thing, but sometimes the emotional thing is actually the sneakier thing and the thing that's got some Christians tied up in it as well fear and anxiety. Again, the other one I'll be quick to point out and I'll move on from this, but the darkness of the world is greed. If you've been freaking out because oil uh, hit less than a dollar uh, a, gal a, a barrel, um, don't worry, it'll bounce back up. We'll start driving cars or some, some country will restock their strategic reserve and, and oil will be fine. Um, but the economy right? One or two of my friends from college who I'm still friends with um, are in the financial services industry, are the, the financial planners, and the number of people they've had calling them freaking out as the markets go through some readjustment. Um, it's not nice. It's not a good time for them. Again, this is, this is not the light of Christ. Uh, as Jesus tells us, I will take care of you. See, the birds of the air have nests and and uh, the, the lilies of the field are clothed in more splendor than Solomon. How much more will I take care of you? And so we have these kinds of things that um, are sitting there for us to think about in terms of our... Um, in terms of our devotion here today. Uh, and then the rest of it is this long parade. And I really like the parade. And if you know the Old Testament, and if you know um, the, uh, t the stories, these are all um, listed here are all their friends and neighbors, or all their enemies and neighbors, as the case frequently is, or all of the biggest actors. Um, if you're wondering, that was Hank coming in and out. Sometimes that happens. Um, so uh, these are the friends and neighbors, or the enemies and neighbors, and they're all coming and bringing their things. And so if you go back to Easter Monday, um, there's that devotion on Exodus about looting, um, looting the room or looting the, sorry, looting the, the nation of Egypt. Uh, this is that, everybody bringing their tithes and, and offerings to Israel, the people, except here it's the church. Uh, and so that's the other devotional thought for today as we kind of wrap this up. I really like this little section um, because it's a nice view of the at last days. There's no bulls of wrath. There's no, there's no antichrist stomping around, uh, destroying everything. Um, it's a parade. Um, and so this is a stewardship thought. Um, and it's not necessarily just when we all get back, because uh, if you aren't a member of my church, your church still needs uh, operating money. Um, and uh, our bills didn't go away because of coronavirus. I'll just tell you that now. Payroll didn't go away. Um, you know how to get money to those organizations, churches or nonprofits or charities or those sorts of things. Um, they're all in desperate need. Um, and you know how to get money. Either you can donate online or you can write a check or you can leave bags of unmarked bills on the secretary's desk. It's okay. Um, but when we think about the end, when we think about the uh, last day, uh, here's a picture of everybody bringing their offerings to God, the nations bringing their offerings. And it puts a stewardship thought in my head, or in our head, or it should, of what has God given me? God has given me life. God has given me salvation. God has given me eternal life. He has given me sanctification, which is a wild thought that God would work on perfecting even little old me. Now, what am I going to do in response? Or how does that make me feel? Uh, and if the, the, the kind of response is not filled with joy and wonder and excitement, we need to chat. Uh, <laughs> uh, but that, you, that is the proper foundation for all of stewardship. The proper foundation is God has done such wonderful blessings for me. What can I do for him in return? The proper foundation for stewardship is not the church's short money. The proper foundation for stewardship is not 
I have extra and I guess I could do something with it. The proper foundation for stewardship is not, well, they've kind of guilted me and I feel bad. The proper foundation for stewardship, for giving or for that dirty T word, tithe, is God has done such great wonders for me. Now, what can I do for him? And one of the, op one of the things we can do is have good Christian stewardship, which entails offering a portion of God's gifts for use in his kingdom. Again, y'all know your various charities and the things you support, those things that, that can take money. Um, but this is one of those things to plan out and to, to decide beforehand. Um, so um, it's a devotional activity that you can have today as well as uh, contemplating light and darkness and the many different kinds of darkness. But one of the things that you can contemplate as well is the idea of um, uh, where our stewardship heart is and uh, what we're planning to do uh, and, and uh, how that makes us feel and, and whether we think that's appropriate. It's a little bit shorter of a devotion today. Uh, God's blessings to you as we go about our day, and have a wonderful day.